So what we're going to look at in this section is the premature atrial contraction. Now recall that it is not an arrhythmia itself, rather it is an interruption to the underlying rhythm that already exists. Okay, so what is a premature atrial contraction? It is a single site of irritated tissue in the atrium. And then recall our absolute refractory period and our relative refractory period. So this premature atrial contraction is coming in in that relative refractory period just before the QRS is fully recovered. And so what we see is on the picture we're gonna see next is a unique looking P wave. Now these are relatively asymptomatic. Patients typically don't even notice that they're happening. So you're going to notice here, so in fact, if we just start from the beginning, we see these beautiful P waves, QRST, and then our isoelectric line when the heart is at rest, and then we start the cycle again. And as we come down and we progress further, we all of a sudden see that right after the T wave, we've got this funky little thing happening and another QRS complex. So part of the characteristic features are, we'll have a un, an unanticipated shape to the P wave. It will not look round and upright because it did not originate from the SA node. It must have a different shape. And so in this case, we've kind of got this, um, V-shaped thing happening, and then it goes into our QRS. The QRS will still be, be within normal limits. Okay, there's no changing of the movement of electricity through the ventricles, and so therefore we will not see a change in the duration of the QRS. So we would interpret this as a normal sinus rhythm as its underlying rhythm. That's not to say every time there's a PAC, the patient would have a normal sinus rhythm as their main rhythm, you would need to assess your ECG strip to see what the normal underlying rhythm is and then identify that there is a premature atrial contraction. So here we have that early atrial beat followed by QRS and there's a compensatory pause. What that means is the SA node would have fired and it would have got blocked because the tissue is already in that absolute refractory period so the SA node's signal is not going to get through. But the SA node single signals again in beat as if it would had the original stimulus be sent down. So here we have my P wave, QRS, T. I would have expected the P wave about here, QRS, T, and then my P wave would march out as we've talked about in the past. So let's review this in terms of the chart. And notice I've changed here and I put the underlying rhythm. In this case, I have normal sinus rhythm. So my underlying rhythm will have all the normal parameters except my P wave will be unusual. And the PR interval for that particular impulse will be shorter. We can't really measure one because it's really difficult to see, see what's going on. Everything else will be normal. Now let's look at some terminology for premature atrial contractions because there are some unique features that might show up. In this case, we've got four different descriptors. The first one is called by Gemini, which means every other beat is a premature atrial contraction. So I would have, say, a normal sinus one and then a PAC, and a normal sinus and a PAC. That would be by Gemini. Try Gemini, as what's shown here in the picture, is every third beat is a premature atrial contraction. So you can see that I've got a QRS complex that's normal, followed by a second one that's normal, and then we have a third one that is a premature atrial contraction. Now these would typically march out, but that premature atrial contraction is creating an irregular rhythm. So this would be normal sinus rhythm with Try Gemini. And that's kind of the tricky part when it comes to assessing rhythm. The rhythm, the underlying rhythm is regular, but it has trigemini PACs. The third one is every fourth one is a PAC. We call that quadrigemini. Now there is another condition where you might see two in a row and we call that a couplet. There are many causes for premature atrial contractions as you might imagine. It's no different than any other arrhythmia. It's really depending the, the response of the cardiac tissue is really what we're seeing on the ECG tracing, but we still need to find out what's causing it. 
So in this case, coronary artery disease, again, we've seen that come up in a lot of our arrhythmias. The decreased oxygenation to those tissues might cause them to become stressed and they will, you know, send out their cry for help. Hello. Valve diseases, potentially we've got that atrial tissue stretching, which is causing irritation. Anything that changes the structure will change the function. And so that's another piece that we have to consider with valve issues. Respiratory failure, lung disease, COPD, asthma, anything that's decreasing the oxygenation to the tissue will cause trauma. Electrolyte imbalances should be no surprise at this point, considering we've talked about action potentials and the importance of calcium, sodium, and potassium in that functioning of the electrical system. Medications, anything to do with um, any medication that can cause a change in the electrical conduction or in the responsiveness of those cells may be responsible for a premature atrial contraction. And of course, we have those physiological things like anxiety and stress, fatigue. Maybe we're just drinking too much coffee or alcohol, even pregnancy. Treatment for PACs is generally not needed. Most patients are asymptomatic, and it's really a coincidental finding when they come in for something else. If it doesn't affect cardiac output, we just generally recommend patients let them know that they have this and to let us know if things change in the future. Again, let's see if we can find that underlying cause and provide some education. Maybe they need to lay off drinking for a while and see if that changes. Maybe they need to go and take some counseling for their stress to see if that helps resolve the issues with the heart. All good strategies. Okay, in our next slide, or our next module, we're heading into atrial fibrillation.